All right, let's talk about shell optimization. Uh, now, there's a couple things you might want to optimize about your shell. Uh, one is how fast does the prompt redraw? So if I just hit enter here, like we might not notice that the prompt is slow, but if I hold the enter key down, we'll see a problem. Um, and the problem is the key events are arriving faster than the prompt can redraw. So it's not a huge deal. Um, like I don't feel like I'm waiting around for the prompt to redraw in normal usage, but whenever I see these gaps, it just irritates me. So it'd be nice to fix those, wouldn't it? Um, the other thing that can be really irritating um, is when you're creating a new shell. So for example, I'm in Tmux now, if I open a new split, you see there's a, a delay before the prompt appears and before I can start using that new pane that I've made. Um, now over the last couple of days, I have been optimizing both of those things. Um, so I'm gonna get out of this shell um, into a, a good shell. Um, and you see, um, this is the optimized version. And um, when I hold the enter key down here, we pretty much have no gaps. Got one there, um, but yeah, most of the time, no gaps. Um, so that's definitely optimized. Um, now to, I'm gonna go back to the commit I was on before so that you can see how fast it is to open a new pane. So now that's once again, I mean, it's not instantaneous, uh, but it is massively better than it was before. So let's have a look at how we profile this stuff um, and figure out what's slow, and then look at a couple of techniques for fixing the things that are slow. Um, so I'm gonna get Vim open, and I'm gonna go to my ZSharc. Um, you see that I've got these commented out things here. Now there's two ways to profile. Um, down here, um, you can just turn on this thing called uh, Zprof, which is a module that comes with, with um, Zsh. Um, you put that command, you load the Zprof module at the start of your, your startup, and then at the end, you just tell it to dump the um, output somewhere. So let's just dump it into foo, just because I can't think of anything better. Um, so now I'll start a new shell, and now I'll open uh, temp foo. As you can see here, I'll make the font a little bit smaller. This is an example of where the time was spent at a function level uh, during the startup. And you can see here that the most expensive thing is related to completion, but the times here aren't, aren't a lot really. I mean, that's 25 milliseconds, uh, 43 milliseconds in all. And that noise is my dog scratching the floor. Um, so I'm probably at the point of diminishing returns here, like when I'm down to like double digit, a couple of small double digit millisecond items. Um, so let's um, compare that to what we see on the old version of the shell. Um, I'll see if I can figure out how to get there. I guess I'll go, I'll, I'll check out the, the slow rev that I was, oh my God. Check out the slow rev. Um, and then I'll open my Zish RC again, and we'll do up the top here, Zmod load, I think it was Zish, Zprof, Rof, and then down here it was Zprof to a file. Temp bar, that'll do. So now I'm gonna start a shell, which was slow, and I'm gonna, um, whoops, gonna look at what we did. Okay, so this is how things used to be as of a few days ago before I did the optimizations. Um, here you can see uh, we've got a very expensive color item, which is adding uh, something like almost 70 milliseconds to the startup. Um, and so I will show you in a sec um, how I optimize that. Um, but let's first look, go, we'll go back to our previous version of the shell. Oh my God, every time. Um, and we'll go back to the ZSharc so I can show you these other items. Um, so that was function level profiling, but there's also per command profiling, which is like way more detailed. So I'm gonna uncomment that. Um, I'll pro provide a link to us. I'll provide a link to this in, along with the video. Um, but basically this is just gonna log into a file using this Xtrace option. Um, and so at the end, we'll do that. Um, there's a bit of file redirection to get standard out and standard air going, um, but we'll just start a new shell. And now in this directory, we have a start model. So uh, this is what, well, this is way more detailed than the function of profiling that I showed you. This has got, you know, 1600 lines of stuff in it. Um, so let's have a look at that. Did I not just open that? Oh, that was some previous version of it that I looked at before. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna turn off wrapping for this so we can see it a little bit better. You see here, um, this here is seconds since the Unix epoch, and this is nanoseconds. Um, so, you know, we started at like 678 seconds and 458 milliseconds and by the end here, um, still 678 seconds, but like a couple, almost a couple hundred milliseconds have elapsed. Um, so this is the optimized version of the shell we're looking at, remember. Um, so what, basically what I did was I, I went through this file where, as you can see, like every single line that it's evaluating, it is printing, you know, when that line started. And I was looking here for like jumps in the value to see what things were slow. 
Um, and so now I guess I'll just show you some of those things. Um, so git log grep, uh, grep perf, and then, yeah, show me the patches. Um, so because I paste a lot of crap into my commit messages, you can see here the evidence that I was basing this on. Uh, but basically, um, you know, I had some commands setting up my path and I was calling gem m gem path uh, to get the list of places where RubyGem might have installed um, execution executables. I mean, you see there that that took, you know, 133 milliseconds and then like, you know, 150 milliseconds later, it's returned the result. The juice, the juice is definitely not worth a squeeze there because if you look at this, there's three items in that uh, list of paths. And when I looked at, you can see that I've already run this, but when I looked at this, um, this list of locations, like, most of them are things I don't even use. So there's Nakagiri, which comes with a system that I'm not using, and then there's Yard, and, and I'm not using that on any Ruby projects, so it's like, there's just no point in even adding to this to the path, so I just removed it. Um, so similar, oops, similar story along here, um, let's have a look. This is the same with Java Home, like I used to work at a place where we had to use Java. Um, now I'm not using Java for anything at all, so same deal. Um, if you look here, it's not quite as expensive as the Ruby Gem stuff, but uh, where was it? Um, you can see there it's calling, this thing here, it's calling Java Home, and then you know that's 14 milliseconds, 40 milliseconds for that call. Um, you know, another 11 milliseconds for that call, 11 milliseconds for that call. It's just not worth adding all these milliseconds together for something that I'm not even using. Um, well, yeah, so I just removed that. Uh, yarn global bin, same problem. Uh, I'm adding this to the path um, for to pick up any globally installed executables that are put there via Yarn. If we look at Yarn global bin. It just prints use a local bin, which was already in the path, um, so that's a waste of time. And as you can see, um, it was taking of, on the order of 300 milliseconds. That's like just ridiculously expensive for something that does nothing valuable. <laughs> um, what else have we got? Um, the rest is really in the realm of micro optimizations. Um, so this commit, I think we can skip. Um, but basically, I'll just briefly say that these um, Tmux set commands are really expensive or they're really slow for some reason that I don't understand. So I'm instead uh, cutting those commands into a setup file that will be evaluated only once when the Tmux server is started um, or if a user explicitly runs a command. So that's that's a very kind of idiosyncratic thing in my setup, but those were a few slow commands that I got rid of. Um, what else? You can still hear my dog destroying things. Um, eh, stop it. Um, yeah, then this is the commit where I added the profiling stuff. And then what I did was a bunch of stuff that replaced forking things like, you know, subshells and multiple commands and commands and pipelines with parameter substitution. So the example that you can see here, um, you know, I, I used to be forking grep and cut and said in a subshell um, which is itself a fork, as far as I know, um, I think it is. So that meant, you know, four forks uh, for something that can be done with um, just one fork, like, or two forks rather, because we, we still have to call grep, um, but then we can do the rest with Zeesh parameter substitution. Now, a, a pro tip for this would be, uh, if you can't understand what this does, I mean, of course you can look it up in the Zeesh all man page, um, but sometimes it can be hard to find the thing that explains what you're doing until you, until you um, get a feel for what the different sections are. So a shortcut to this is actually a good, it's a good use for ChatGPT. Like just paste in a couple of lines like this and say, can you explain to me what these Zeesh um, commands do? It usually does a pretty reasonable job. I mean, sometimes it hallucinates and says things that aren't true, especially when you're asking for like subtle things, like what's the difference between this and this? And sometimes it just, you know, reaches the wrong conclusion, but it's actually pretty good um, if you're having trouble finding things in the man page. So yeah, a lot of stuff related to removing uh, forking and then yep same thing here you can see I'm using a parameter expansion to like look up sub indices of a variable as opposed to piping out to cut so avoiding you know, two shells per call um, and very similar here um, avoiding an orc by once again using fancy zish um, array matching or something I'm not sure you'd even call that um, finally um, there was one really stupid thing that I, yeah, well, here's one where I'm getting rid of uh, calls that fork um, the base name process um, and instead use once again Zish parameter expansion. That's my dog playing with a ball. Um, and then, oh yeah, this is a nice one. 
Um, I installed a module called uh, Zish Async, which allows you to basically start a worker and give it jobs to do and then get a call back when they're done. And so I'm using that to draw the expensive parts of the prompt. Um, because previously, you'll notice here um, on the right hand side of the prompt, I have git status information. Um, the red dot means there's changed files. The blue dot means there's untracked files. Those colors match the output of git status. Um, and also it's got the branch name there. But um, because this was slow, um, I would evaluate it kind of lazily. So there were some directories where I had it configured to not run. Um, and I also had it configured that, you know, when you would first open a shell, like it wouldn't appear. But now it does appear and the reason is because it's happening asynchronously. So if I go to like an expensive um, directory like Linux, you see there that it took a while for it to pop in, but the, um, the shell is responsive like before that result is finished computing. And when it does compute, it pops in. And that's all done using this Zish async module, uh, which is really cool. Um, then what else did I do? Yeah, I had a stupid thing here where like I was calling this history function that was basically listing all the history. Um, and then I was um, piping that into tail uh, to get the, the last entry of it when I could have just told the history command to like, just give me the last line. So I did that. I think that's about the end of my optimizations. Um, so yeah, plenty of stuff you can do in Zish to make it faster. Uh, and the important part, I guess, is profiling first so that you know that you're actually fixing the things that matter. Um, and that's all I got. But uh, if you want to see more of this content, subscribe and like and all that other stuff. And I will be back.